What happened to Montrose? Ronnie Montrose, the guitarist who founded the band Montrose, had a successful career as a session musician before that. He played on Van Morrison's album Tupelo Honey, produced by Ted Templeman, alongside future Montrose bassist Bill Church. He also contributed to albums by Beaver and Krauss and Herbie Hancock. Additionally, he was a member of the Edgar Winter Group and played on their best-selling album, They Only Come Out at Night, from 1972, which included the number one hit single, Frankenstein. Ronnie Montrose decided to form his own self-named band in 1973. Enlisting the help of fellow session pros Bill Church on bass, Denny Carmacy on drums, and a talented up-and-coming California singer named Sammy Hagar, Montrose soon released their debut first album in November of that year. Although it never broke the Billboard Hot 100, Montrose eventually went platinum and was arguably the first full-fledged heavy metal album by an American band, although there were some proto-metal bands before like Blue Cheer and Steppenwolf. With classics like Space Station No. 5 and Bad Motor Scooter leading the charge to the nation's airwaves, it is still considered one of the finest, most influential releases of the decade to boot. Often cited as America's answer to Led Zeppelin, it is held to be influential amongst hard rock and heavy metal band Iron Maiden, who have recorded and or performed cover versions of songs from this album. Trouble was already looming as Church quit the group soon after and was replaced by bassist and keyboard player Alan Fitzgerald for the ensuing tour. Released less than a year after its debut, Paper Money proved to be a surprisingly diverse but unfocused follow-up that failed to match its predecessor's popularity. Making things worse, escalating tensions between Ronnie Montrose and Hagar soon led to the latter's departure following the Paper Money tour. Hagar's replacement was relative newcomer Bob James, but it was new full-time keyboard player Jim Alcivar who quickly placed his stamp on the group's appropriately titled third album, Warner Brothers Presents Montrose, which was released at the tail end of 1975 and produced by Ronnie himself. Soon after the release, Fitzgerald departed the band and he later became a member of Night Ranger. New bassist Randy Joe Hobbs performed on 1976's Jack Douglas produced Jump On It. This was also poorly received, and it boasted an ill-conceived album cover to match. It never had a chance, and the musicians soon went their separate ways. Carmacy joined Hagar's solo band, also featuring Bill Church by then, and he later played with Hart and many other bands. Ronnie Montrose resurfaced a year later with the solo instrumental album Open Fire released in January 1978. During this period, the guitarist also worked with jazz fusion drummer Tony Williams. In 1979, along with Montrose holdovers Jim Alcivar and Alan Fitzgerald, drummer Skip Gillette, and Scottish vocalist Davey Pattison, Ronnie Montrose formed a new group in the progressive hard rock mold named Gamma. The band's debut, Gamma One, was released in 1979. Their second release, Gamma 2, in 1980, saw former Montrose drummer Denny Carmacy replacing Skip Gillette and bassist Glenn Letch replacing Alan Fitzgerald, who went on to become a founding member as a keyboard player on Night Ranger. In the late 1970s, Sammy Hagar achieved moderate success as a solo artist with Capitol Records, but felt his A&R man Carter didn't align with his heavy metal style. Despite hits like Red... Hagar parted ways with Carter, self-producing the 1979 Street Machine album. Moving to Geffen Records, he found major success with Standing Hampton and Three Lockbox, the latter producing his first pop top 40 hit, Your Love Is Driving Me Crazy. Hagar continued thriving in the 1980s, notably with the hit I Can't Drive 55 from the 1984 album VOA. In 1987, he had his first number one hit on the Billboard album Rock Tracks with Give to Live after joining Van Halen. In 1983, 
Montrose played lead guitar on the song She Is a Telepath from Paul Kantner's album Planet Earth Rock and Roll Orchestra, although he was not a member of the original Planet Earth Rock and Roll Orchestra. He recorded under the Montrose name once again for 1987's Mean, a one-off affair featuring singer Johnny Edwards, bassist Glenn Letch, and drummer James Kodak. In 1985, after parting ways with David Lee Roth, Van Halen hired Sammy Hagar as the new vocalist, leading to the era informally known as Van Hagar. The collaboration resulted in four multi-platinum number one Billboard charting albums and numerous hits. Internal disputes arose and Hagar left the band in June 1996 due to disagreements over recording new tracks for a Greatest Hits album. Hagar wanted to prioritize a new studio album after addressing medical issues, but the conflict intensified, culminating in his departure. Van Halen then collaborated with David Lee Roth and later Gary Sharon, marking the end of the Van Hagar era. In 1992, Sammy Hagar, David Louser, and Michael Anthony formed the band Los Tres Gusanos. Despite being a bar jam band, they regrouped multiple times and performed occasionally. Robert Berry filled in for Anthony in 1996 and 1998. The band, like Planet Us, played at events but never officially released music. Hagar's solo career and collaborations, including the Song for Song tour with David Lee Roth, followed. In 2002, Hagar, Neil Sean, and Joe Satriani formed Planet Us. Despite recording two songs, the band dissolved. Hagar later reunited with Van Halen for a tour in 2004 marked by tensions, alleged alcoholism, and a strained relationship with Eddie Van Halen. The tour concluded with a controversial final show in Tucson. Hagar expressed concerns about Eddie's changed personality, eventually detailed in his 2011 autobiography. In early 2002, Ronnie Montrose formed a new Montrose lineup with bassist Chuck Wright, drummer Pat Torpy, and singer Keith St. John. They played West Coast dates throughout the year in support of their Rhino compilation, The Very Best of Montrose. Montrose continued his production and session work and would tour regularly over the last dozen years of his life. And he did all of that even with having prostate cancer during the late 2000s. Unfortunately, a self-inflicted gunshot ended his life on March 3rd, 2012. In 2005, Sammy Hagar toured with the Wabaritas, later adding ex-Van Halen bass player Michael Anthony. The 2006 tour included a segment with Anthony, forming a band called The Other Half. Hagar released Living It Up in St. Louis with the Wabos in 2006. In 2008, he formed Chicken Foot with Anthony, Chad Smith, and Joe Satriani, releasing albums in 2009 and 2011. In 2014, Hagar formed Sammy Hagar in the Circle, featuring Michael Anthony, Vic Johnson, and Jason Bonham. They toured, and in 2019, their debut album, Space Between, achieved significant chart success. In the summer of 2024, Sammy Hagar is planning on doing a tour with Jason Bonham, Michael Anthony, and Joe Satriani, performing majority of Van Halen hits. And that's what happened to Montrose. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Give me some facts about the band that I failed to mention and let me know who I should do next on this channel. And I posted a video about Sammy Hagar a couple years ago. So here's the link of the video on screen. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.